Every car new from 2026 forward is mandated by this infrastructure bill to have a kill switch. And we don't know what the parameters, like the document says nothing about what those parameters are. That's so good. It simply says mandatory kill switch that is an algorithm that can read the driver and can understand the actions of the driver and then shut the vehicle down. Have you been following the news here in the US? A little bit. We have passed this uh, very small, uh, not well known piece of legislation, an infrastructure bill. Yes. Yes. I've heard about this. Yes. Do you know what the infrastructure bill is for? Uh, to spend a pile of taxpayer money. It is sold, or has been sold, and this has been passed. This is the one that's been passed, so not the it, one that's being negotiated right now, the additional piece. Oh, okay. The concept is let's, let's, let's build newer airports. Let's, let's invest into freeways and interstates. And there are things about it I don't like. I'm not a big fan of printing money. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I don't like it for that reason alone. However, there is another piece in this document, 2,700 pages, that is concerning. Do you know what happens in 2026, according to this document? Tell me. Your car will have a kill switch in it. Oh, really? Every car new from 2026 forward is mandated by this infrastructure bill to have a kill switch. But it's not just a kill switch, as in, remember the movie Idiocracy, President Camacho? Yes. <laughs> when they were chasing him in the electric car, the golf carts? Yes. And they could defeat the car, the police could hit the button and the car would stop? Yes. It's that. Literally, Idiocracy is coming to life. I'm not even joking with this. Okay? <laughs> I want to I wanna laugh, yeah. but it's true, so I'm going to cry. I, I got to laugh. It goes further. It is an algorithm in your car that you buy, that you pay your own money for. Right. Okay. Now, for the avoidance of that, this is taking the text directly from the 2,700-page document. Did I say it's 2,700 pages? Three times already. Okay, I just want to make sure we're clear on yeah. this. So this document calls out a kill switch. That's what I'm calling it, but it's a mandatory defeat switch that not only gives others the ability to kill your car, shut your car down, Right, but it also uses algorithms to sense your current state. So let's extrapolate that out a little bit. Let's say for the sake of discussion you're a drunk driver, or let's say for the sake of discussion it senses that you're an erratic driver, perhaps you're experiencing an emotional breakdown. Uh huh. This algorithm and we don't know what the parameters, like the document says nothing about what those parameters are. That's so good. It simply says mandatory kill switch that is an algorithm that can read the driver and can understand the actions of the driver and then shut the vehicle down or won't even let you switch on the vehicle and proceed on your journey. I mean, if we're gonna, if we're gonna pick this apart, we gotta start somewhere. So I, I'm gonna suggest that we look at this from the perspective of What's going to happen when the car senses that you're incapable of driving within a certain set of parameters mm -hmm. or someone remotely clicks their mouse mm -hmm. and, and tells your car to shut down? Mm -hmm. We're talking about 2026. So we're driving 2022 cars and all we have is at the high end some decent SAE level two autonomy. Mm -hmm. And we're so far away from level four, mm -hmm. that is not gonna happen in four years. So we're talking about a car having to make a decision to safe, uh, stop safely somewhere. Mm -hmm. So how, how is that gonna happen in four years? That is, that is uh, an insurmountable problem in four years. Let's say for the sake of discussion that it is unhackable, which <laughs> I've worked in tech for 15 years. I've never heard of such a thing there, as there is, unhackable. There is no so anything that is... But let's assume it's oh. unhackable. Okay. Okay? Okay. Let's just assume sure. it's unhackable. Does a law enforcement agency, do they need a warrant to go and switch your car off? Mm -hmm. Or can they just, at free will, switch your car off? Then, let's get into the bad actors. Yes. There's that alone. Let's say for the sake of discussion, 
you want to play in the war games of the future, mm -hmm. what if you were to all of a sudden switch everybody's cards off? Exactly. What if you didn't like a certain group of people? You could switch their car off. Mm -hmm. If that's not enough, then there's, what about the data that comes off this? Because at the end of the day, in our world, there's this old, uh, it's not really an old saying, it's a new saying. If you aren't paying for the product, you are the product. Absolutely. So if I'm General Motors, if I'm Volkswagen, if I'm Ford, am I farming that data? And then who do I sell it to? Am I selling it to your insurance company? Mm -hmm. Am I selling it to your medical insurance company? Am I selling it back to the government? Or is the government the one that is the repository of the data and then all of a sudden using that data against you? In this country, particularly, and I'm sure, you know, Canada to a certain degree, but it's 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 not happening at least um, in a way that it's disclosed. But in this country, there are companies that aggregate data from every possible source. Yeah. And certainly today, given the amount of data that cars are spilling, that data is being sold to these companies and aggregated to profile you. So, I think. This, all these pieces make up one massive privacy concern like we've never experienced in our lives before. No. Like we are being tracked by our, de our devices. Look, I got nothing to hide. If you want to look at my Instagram and what I look at, you're going to see a lot of dog pictures and a lot of Porsche pictures. I'll admit that. I'm mm -hmm. a freak about that kind of stuff. Fine. Go ahead and look at it. But do I want my insurance company to know how, how fast I drive in the canyons? Not really. No. Do I want my insurance company to know that perhaps when I'm late for a flight, I might drive a bit more aggressively? No. And what they do is they turn it around on you and they sell this concept of, well, safe drivers, they're overpaying for insurance. So we're taking this data to give you good people of the car buying public we're giving you a discount. This has already started. Now we're in an unusual position. In my personal cars, I don't install those things. Mm -hmm. I have no interest in doing that and I'm gonna avoid that as long as possible. I don't know if that's gonna be possible to avoid yeah. it in the long term, but certainly with new cars, that data is there. It's readily available. To date, at least in Canada, there's no connection between the manufacturers and the insurance companies, mm -hmm. but that is that those relationships are getting more entrenched and more sophisticated, mm -hmm. so that's inevitable. I'm looking at this a little bit differently. Okay. I'm, I'm putting this under the heading of, we don't know what we don't know. My concern about this, like, to be honest with you, if, if there's a law enforcement agency that could fast track a warrant, meaning they would be online with a judge that's working 24 hours and there's a probable cause of a drunk driver, mm -hmm. I could see the benefit of that. And that's one isolated case. I think one could argue that. But there is so many pitfalls that come along with that. I would want to avoid this like the plague yes. because we don't know what we don't know. And then you layer on top of that, it has been proven so many times, especially over the past, what, three years, there are bad actors that are willing to just absolutely go after private companies, mm -hmm. citizens, governments. What the hell do you think they would do with this data? Consider how politicians have, at least in Canada, have, have taken more control and more control and more control and more control. And you know, if I, if I go down that cynical path, I can easily arrive at a point where this kind of power can be easily abused to the point at which if you said something nasty about a politician or something unfavorable on social media, your car gets turned off. Here's the reality of the situation. I don't care if you're left, right, or center. I think all of us have had some struggles with the mainstream media or the state media, whatever the hell you want to call it. And this is not just a North American thing this is a worldwide thing. I learned about this from an insider. I have not seen one news article about this. I, haven't, I don't care where you get your news, CNN, Fox, BBC, CBC, I don't care where you get it. Mm -hmm. Not one of those outlets picked this up in that whole infrastructure debate. And really? even that is more concerning to me, that the media, mm -hmm. left or right, wouldn't pick that up. You would think both would have privacy concerns with that. 
everybody should have Am privacy. Am I off base in that? Not at all. Not at all. Everybody should have privacy concerns about this. I mean, this is, this is, it's a powerful tool. Um, that powerful that doesn't even begin. This is, right. you it, know what this is? This is, um, what is that? Um, Skynet. <laughs> it kind of Literally, is. this is Skynet. Skynet for cars. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a funny thing. What was it? Uh, <laughs> uh, back to the Future. Remember mm -hmm. when Michael J. Fox went back for the first time and he saw Christopher Lloyd and he says, Who's the president? And he says, Ronald Reagan. The actor? Right. And literally at this point, Arnold Schwarzenegger is coming after your car. Right. So what do we do about this? The easy argument is, do you really think the government's going to be capable of, of executing this? And, and back to my practical problem of resolving how a vehicle is going to stop safely yeah. is, is, for 2026, to me that's insurmountable. But that doesn't mean that this problem is going to go away. That means they're going to kick this can a little further down the road until they can solve it. I think there's two things going on there. I think, number one, you're right. I don't think the government is all capable, not only to do it, but to implement it. And you know what that means? Consultants. Consultants right. ruin everything. Uh, like take California, for example. You name the issue, whether it's fire management, uh, vagrancy, mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. The government doesn't deal with those issues. They realize that they're incompetent. They hire consultants. Consultants get all this money. Right. And consultants are the ones that donate to politicians. And I see this being a massive quagmire. Where are the car makers lobbyists on this? This is, a, this is a huge issue for them in just four short years. And this is where I think we stumble upon one of the bigger problems. If the car makers and their lobbyists didn't say anything, something tells me they're in bed on it. This, this bill has passed already, right? Yeah, you know, sadly already passed. So, sadly passed. Put aside I mean, the printing of money. That's, my, I think, a bigger issue it, here. Yeah, it bigger is. Bigger shorter-term solution. Yeah. We're putting literally more liquidity into the system, and we're just setting ourselves up for a just a world of hurt in terms of inflation. Put aside fixing bridges and that kind of stuff. This is debt, and you guys know how I feel about debt. At the end of the day, whether it's personal debt or the government staying in debt, yeah. It sets you up for failure. Debt is literally modern day slavery. Debt, it, it, it puts off every big milestone in your life. Mm -hmm. Like I, I teach a Dave Ramsey class at the church, you know, yep. and I work with older couples, younger couples, and what I see so often with younger couples is by getting into significant amount of school debt, it puts off when they get married, right. it puts off when they buy a home, puts off when they have a kid. Right. That's what happens to governments. Right. And pretty soon we won't be able to service the debt. Like forget about getting out of debt mm -hmm. and paying for programs that governments may want. Like for example, California actually putting out fires or preventing fires. Right. Instead, we're gonna be paying more to service the debt and we won't be able to actually pay for that. That's my main concern with this, this infrastructure bill. I understand that. So why didn't media, and I think it's the fault of the media, at least say this is what's coming as part of this package. Mm -hmm. We want you to know, and you make your own, and that's, that's kind of what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. We're bringing light to this so you guys see this, and you guys reach out to your elected officials, maybe even reach out to car companies and say, how the hell did you guys agree to this? Mm -hmm. well, who knows, maybe this is one of the sources of that money, and that's why it's been buried. The, the leads to so many restrictions. And I was in tech, and I know what people can do with this kind of data, and it scares the hell out of me, yep. and it should scare the hell out of you. So, in the comments below, yep. what are we missing? What do we write on? What do we not write on? Mm -hmm. Anything else I'm missing about that? If we look at it again from a positive perspective, and it's just limited to preventing drunk driving, I'm all for it but I don't think it's gonna go that way. So I'd love to know what I'm not seeing here. On that note, uh, Brian Max, all one word, all the socials, Moto Man TV, all one word, and of course, once again, we have to humbly ask for your help with the algorithm. What does that mean? Subscribe, click notifications, yep. share these episodes with all your friends on your socials. Especially on Reddit. Especially on Reddit, and click like. Always. We're gonna to have to pick up this conversation again, my friend. Yes, well, thanks to Cigars and More, 
Yes. And El Segundo. Michelle, Marco, and George were the proprietors. Lovely establishment here. We spend far too much time and far too much money here. Yes, we Until do. Until we see you guys in the next episode. Bishweta. Bye.